Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Gain Reduction 2 plugin by Joey Sturgis Tones. Now this vocal plugin is a second version of what they started with and they added a bunch of new features to it that um, actually are, are kind of like combining some other plugins in with the same one and it makes it really easy for you to apply these to your own vocal tracks at home whether it's something straight out of a preamp or if you're running through outboard gear there's a lot of really cool options on it. So let me show you how I've added it to some stems here. The song that I'm working with is a, a session that I worked on with Sirens and Sailors called I'm Not Sorry. And I'll show you how I've applied it to the screaming and clean vocal sections of the mix. So before we get into that part, I'll just break down some of what this plugin is and how it really is different from the original version. So starting at the top here, um, this, this mode selection basically is a light or a heavy version of how much compression is being applied to your your vocal. So we, if you are familiar with the original gain reduction, that plugin, if you just throw it right on the vocals, it, it has a very uh, aggressive type of um, compression style to it that that is, is actually quite flattering in almost all vocals you put through it. But it looks like they gave you the option to lessen that effect if you have something that's a little um, less in need of something that aggressive. Uh, so after that we have the mix section so you can use this sort of like a parallel compression in a sense where you can roll off some of what you're affecting and then use a little bit more of the source original. Uh, for me I typically like to leave it all the way up but there's a balance that you can find depending on what kind of project you're working with. Uh, with the input section this is obviously just your input going in and your output is your output but the nice features about each is that with the input if you shift and double click, it gives you this option to sense the level of the vocal track you're working with, and then it'll calibrate the input to be what is kind of like a nominal level that it, it, it thinks that the vocal should be coming in at. So it's really helpful if you're not sure where it should be or if you just want to take the thought out of it. The output section has a really cool um, characteristic where if you, if you start to push it on the top end, uh, once you start making it louder and louder, it actually adds kind of a distortion quality to it, which can be really, really interesting as well. Now, here's the the cool features, I think, the breath and the sibilance. Now, the breath, um, it's like if you if you were to turn it down, it's like taking the breaths out of your voice, but but it's I think it's important to understand how it's working. Uh, I, f I feel like the breath is acting kind of like a gate. So anything below a certain threshold of, of noise, um, I'm not entirely sure if the inner workings of the algorithm have anything to do with like the frequency content, but it kind of acts like a gate. Whereas if the breaths are quieter than the actual vocals, it'll kind of not let it through and you can adjust how much of that is um, being applied to the vocals. So if you turn the breath down, it should, in theory, if your vocals you're on, on the way in are balanced enough, it should be able to lighten the amount of breath that comes through. If you turn it all the way down, your vocal is going to go away. But if you find that balance, again, you'll you'll see where where it actually will be a useful effect. Now the sibilance is basically like a de-esser, so you can tame the essing. You know the, the the s's and the f's and the and the th's and, and all that kind of really spitty sounding stuff you can tame that um by by pulling it back and that's a really great feature because it eliminates the need for a de -esser in a sense you know it's a it's a very easy way to apply that to your vocal now the warmth section is it seems to add like almost like a tube warmth or uh, a little bit of saturation to your vocal. It's something fun to play with. I like to use it for adding a little bit of strength in like the, the outside vocals. And then um, I use the, the air, something that adds a little bit more of a, uh, a higher frequency content kind of saturation for stuff that's more in the center. Uh, and so finding the balance between the air and the warmth and the sibilance is really what makes this plugin really great for me. Now with the clarity and the body, those are a, a bit obvious. Like the clarity is is something that that adds more. You know, it's kind of hard to not use the word clarity because it, it it just it makes sense. It's it's taking the top end content and it's it's making it clearer. I guess you can say uh, the body is is like adding body to it. It's adding a little bit of strength in the bottom end and somewhere in the low mid stuff like that. That's how I feel like it works well with 
what I'm trying to do. And that's how I understand it to be uh, relevant to what I'm doing. Now, the really cool feature that I love is the slay, uh, the slay um, knob here and uh, the slider rather. And that's, that's something that was in the gain reduction, the first version and playing with that really kind of gives it that excitement effect. So it's really about the compression. So the more you add, the more aggressive the compression is going to be. But in between using the light and the heavy and then adjusting the input, choosing how much output you want to do, if you want to get into that kind of like gainy area at the top, and then balancing that sleigh is really how you get to kind of color your own customized version of, of compression. So those are the basics, and let's see how they apply to the screaming section of this song. So I'm just going to highlight uh, just the screaming section, and we'll just start off with one track for now. This is this is going to be just the main scream vocal. And mind you, these vocals were recorded in through um, a, a preamp, an, a Neve style preamp, and a distressor. And the distressor didn't do too much as far as like really, really compressing but it's it's like a it's sort of like a catch-all to be safe and to add a little bit of compression so the thing about doing that with a plugin like this is if you if you overdo it on the way in it's printed to the stem and then you have to kind of find a, a tougher balance with the plugin so you have to be aware of those types of things when you're using it but this is this is just the stem without any processing on it other than what was tracked with it you always manage to find a way to get under my skin. Okay, so now you'll realize when I put the plugin on, the level's gonna go way up because it's already doing its thing. So check it out. You always manage to find a way to get under my skin. You can hear, you can hear the sibilance, you can hear the the breath, the the pushing of the microphone. It's really quite flattering. Uh, what I did on. All, almost all these tracks here is add just a little EQ because that's that's how I do it before it gets to any plugins anyway. I usually take some of the low end out and I carve just a little bit in the middle and then add some on the top. So let's put a few more of these together and I'll show you how it sounds with all of them. You always manage to find a way to get under my skin! And I just cannot take another fucking minute of it! Where do I start? Pretty strong. Um, it, I think that I love about these plugins, uh, the gain reduction ones, especially this one, is you can just put it on and it sounds good. Um, if you want to get specific on like what little details you want to make sound better, it's really easy to do, especially with the way they lay out like the you know the, the labels of, of the different... Um, descriptions of what what these things are like the breath knob and the sibilance if you understand what they're actually doing it's even better because uh it, it knowing like breath and sibilance and clarity and body like it can get a little confusing if you're not entirely sure but once you really know dialing these plugins in takes like no time at all before i set up this video it took me probably about 30 seconds on each track to just make sure i had had what i wanted and it was easy so let's move on to some clean vocals real quick and the same idea applies. When I when I did this one, this is just the main center vocal. I'll add the EQ this time just so you can see how it comes in before hitting the plug-in with the EQ. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. Won't you please forgive me? Clean vocal. Nothing on it. And mind you, these, none of these vocals have like reverb or effects or anything on it. This is just dry vocal with this plugin. Let's add gain reduction to it. Won't you please forgive me for the mistakes I've made? Really cool, right? So let me show you this this uh, shift double click thing. If I press play, won't you please forgive me for the mistakes I've made? You play me some pretty great. I think that uh, because I already had I already did this it, it set it back to the same place that it was already at so you didn't see it move but it senses how loud your vocal is and it adjusts it for you. It's really neat. Let's put the rest of these in with it. 
these are these are going to be the doubles now what I did differently about these is I used the the warmth this will be the double on the right and this will be the center on the left here um, the sleigh knob is much harder on the center vocal because I want that one to pop through more so it's got more compression it's harsher uh, the output is the same the inputs the same the breath is the same sibilance is the same but the difference that I use is that I added more warmth to the outside vocals and less air and then much more air and less warmth to the center vocal and that's how I can kind of cut them apart a little bit so let's hear how they sound together won't you please forgive me for the mistakes I've made? Much bigger. Let's add the harmonies in. Use the same same type of treatment to apply to the harmonies where it's like, you know, decide if you want more on the bottom end or if you want more on the sibilance of the words and find that space. Won't you please forgive me for the mistakes I've made? You play me somehow. Right? Pretty cool. So if I put this in the mix with everything, and again, remember, that this is this is just an instrumental stem with just vocals, just this plugin, no extra stuff, no delays or tricks or anything fancy, just tweaking the plugin with a little EQ beforehand. Let's check it out. Pretty cool. I think this plugin is a really great way for people to put something easy on their tracks, but also have the flexibility to customize exactly what they want all in one plugin. So check it out, Gain Reduction 2 by Joey Sturgis Tones, and enjoy it.